G'day there, I'm a Hydro Hack and you may remember me from such videos as the Garage NFT series. Now I'm also a bit of a YouTube hack because I haven't posted anything for about uh, four months and that video was over a month old when I posted it. That was back in July, which is the middle of winter here in the Basque Coast region of Victoria. For those internationally viewers, that is the southernmost state of the Australian mainland. But now I need to try and catch you up because I've got an exciting new hydroponics project going on and I'd really like to show it to you. But first I feel like I need to provide closure to all of those people who wanted to see what happened in the Garage NFT. Back in August when it was cold and nothing was growing, I actually shot all the material for a season finale video, but I never got around to editing it and cutting it together and posting it. So this next part of this video is that video. Then at the end, I'll show you what's going on in the present day in the Garage NFT. That is right at the start of summer, early December. Then in my next video, I'll take you through my exciting new outdoor hydroponic veggie garden. But now let's flash back four months to colder times. G'day there and welcome back to my garage NFT and my propagation shelf. It's been five weeks since my last video and things are not really going very well in the garden. Everything down here on the first level has bolted and gone to flower and the basil, which is also bolted, hasn't really grown at all in the five weeks since my last video. The chilies up here are looking quite anemic. Uh, on one of the plants back here, we've got quite a bit of dieback and you can see there's no color in the new leaves. There is still fruit on a lot of these chilies, but it's all ripening while the fruit is still well undersized. These chilies should be a lot bigger than that before they start to ripen. And my research indicates that this could be a sign of stress. Now, the thing that I think is causing the stress is the current Victorian winter temperatures. I think it's just too cold. Usually chilies would be dying off a bit at this time of year. And even though these ones are indoors with an ideal light cycle, it's probably a bit too cold for them. Now, I'm going away to somewhere warmer for the next two weeks and I won't be back to check on the garden. So I'm gonna clean out this first level this weekend and we're gonna retire that level until spring when things start warming up again. I'm gonna let the chilies keep going, but I think I'll harvest some of these ripe fruit even though they are too small. In my last couple of videos, I used the Who Chose Cotton Wool method to plant some new seeds. In here, we've got cos lettuce, watercress, uh, bok choy and pak choy, and some more bok choy and pak choy that's been in there for two weeks less. These were planted about seven weeks ago, and I think the cold weather has also impacted these. I would have expected them to be a lot more progressed at seven weeks, um, and these five weeks ago, I think. And I think everything's just been growing slowly because of the cold temperatures. When I pick this up under here, you can see we've got good root growth out the bottom and we could put those in the puck propagator now if we wanted, but I think I'll do that in two weeks when I get back from holidays. I am going to start planting a bunch more seeds so that we've got a whole bunch of seedlings ready to go when the spring comes and we can get more plants back into the system as things are warming up. All right, so I've pulled a couple of those rails out of there. Here we've got the basil, and you can see that's never been quite right. It's gone to flower now, uh, so we're just gonna get that out of there and throw it out. Um, the coriander also has bolted and is, is shot up quite high, and I've been cutting that back for the last couple of weeks just to keep it under control when I haven't had time to maintain it. So we'll get all of that out of there. Over the back here, we've got some bok choy that's also gone to flower and uh, pak choy that's been flowering for weeks now and I just keep stripping it right back. So we'll, we'll take all of that out. Look at the roots on that basil. There's hardly anything there. You can see why the plant's not healthy. It's the same on these other two basil. So clearly something wasn't right with them. The roots on the bok choy and pak choy weren't too bad. Although given the time that I were in there and based on my previous growing experiences, there's actually not much there. Again, I'm putting it down to the cold weather. 
is just the other two rails. I've got another cup of coriander on the end here and they're not worth keeping, so I'll throw those out. That's not a bad final haul. A lot of that's very usable. So that's level one retired until warmer times. I've got to work out a better plan for the chilies up here, but whatever that is, isn't going to happen until I get back from my holiday in a couple of weeks. I will quickly pick a few of these ripe looking chilies, but obviously I'd like these to be growing to full size. So when I started this, I really had no idea that the cold weather would have such an impact when the plants are inside and have ideal lighting conditions. But you live and learn and we'll try and time it a little bit better next season. I guess that means this could be my last video for a month or two, but I'll definitely be back with more come spring when I plant out the NFT again and possibly set up some other systems. I don't think NFT is the best system for chilies in hindsight. I probably wouldn't do that again. So we'll see what else we can come up with for those. These are just a few of the chilies that we got off those plants. We actually got quite a lot and we use them for all sorts of things, uh, including making a really tasty chili oil. And here we are back in the present day and I hear you asking, what happened to those chilies? Well, they stayed in the NFT for another month or so. Then I picked all the chilies, gave them a hard cut back and moved them into my new outdoor system. I wasn't sure how they would react to the transplant from the NFT into this outdoor potted media type system, but they've been out here for a couple of months now and they seem to be going pretty well. They've all got a lot of new growth. Uh, if anything, this end one here, which I can't even remember which one that is, it's lagging a little bit, but you can see it's got plenty of new growth on it. It's just uh, taking a while to get going. Now it's the beginning of December, so of course I've had the NFT back up and running for a couple of months now, but you'll notice that I'm not running the top layer at the moment, and there's a bit of a story to how we've got to this point. At the moment I've got some bok choy in there that's about ready to harvest. I've got this anemic looking cos lettuce that hasn't been getting enough air. And you can see that from the browning off around the edges of the leaves. I've got some basil that's going great and a mountain of watercress. That watercress has just gone nuts. That's been a really nice surprise. Uh, it's very, very tasty and also apparently super nutritious. You'll note that the system is half empty at the moment and that's because I've been continuously harvesting and I ran out of seedlings to keep replacing the harvested bok choy. I do have a new crop of seeds growing in cotton wool and they'll be ready to go into the system, uh, I reckon in two weeks. But before they go in, I need to clean this out completely and I'll show you why. Aphids. Those little white specks you can see are aphid larvae. And we don't have to look too hard to find some mature aphids in there. It's clearly not ideal and you can see that the plants are suffering because of it. But fortunately the aphids only seem to be impacting the bok choy and pak choy, so the other plants aren't showing any signs of damage. So the question is, how do aphids get into my indoor garden? And I think the answer is here. I've noticed these ants for a little while now. I noticed the ants before I noticed the aphids and I've done a little bit of research. Apparently it's a thing that ants will transport aphids into new areas and then protect them from predators because ants eat the honeydew that is produced by the aphids feeding. So I basically have an ant managed aphid farm. Now I also have these little bugs. I don't know what they are. If anyone recognizes those, leave me a comment, please. And if anyone has any clever ideas on how to keep pests off my bok choy, I'd love to get those comments as well. Now you might be wondering, why am I not leveraging the top level of this double story NFT? When I planted out the system in late September, I had cos lettuce and bok choy up the top. Even though the weather's warmer now and everything was growing beautifully, everything was going to flower really quickly. And it wasn't just restricted to the top level. Everything down the bottom here was also flowering, including the watercress and this bok choy, which has, was already starting to flower before I turned off the light. But ever since I turned off the light up top, my premature flowering issue seems to have stopped. So at this stage, and I'll keep testing, but at this stage, it looks like it might be my Spider Farmer G4500 grow light 
which is a fruiting and flowering grow light. I bought it for the chilies, but maybe it's not so great for green vegetables. In hindsight, this could actually be a partial explanation for why everything was bolting so quickly in the first layer back in winter. Anyone with a lot of experience growing under lights, I'd love to get your thoughts on this. Anyway, I'm gonna leave that light off and keep running this experiment with the new batch of seedlings and we'll see if we have any premature flowering issues then. Now, I'm actually gonna harvest some of this watercress now. We're gonna stir fry that up with some garlic and eat it for dinner tonight. That's so thick. And there's what's left of the watercress. Uh, that, that back one there, oh, I might've gone a bit hard on that, but we'll see what happens next week. Hopefully it bounces back. And there's the harvest. It's pretty massive actually, considering I did a cut back like that about three weeks ago. I'm really happy with how those watercress plants are actually going in the system. I've also just harvested some basil, gonna make some pesto. I've cut those back fairly hard, but hopefully they bounce back nice and bushy. And that pretty much brings us up to date with the Garage NFT. So, to close out this NFT update, let me take you through a few of the things that I've learned over the last oh, 10 or 11 months of NFT growing. First thing, make sure you've got plenty of airflow. Until I put a fan on my crop, I was getting browning and shriveling in the dense centres of all my bushes. Second, plant plants that have the same nutritional requirements. Everything was going great when I was growing my leafy green vegetables at a half strength nutrient but when I introduced the chilies, I upped that nutrient strength and the leafy greens started to suffer. When I lowered the nutrients again, the chilies started to suffer. Finally, plant plants that have similar lighting requirements. We just spoke about what happened to my leafy greens when I introduced the fruiting and flowering light. If you've got this far into the video and you've got some time and space, then I fully recommend that you have a crack. Apart from a few issues, the whole thing's been pretty fun, not too labor intensive or complex, and pretty rewarding from the perspective of being able to regularly harvest loads of fresh green vegetables. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up. And if you're interested in my new outdoor hydroponic veggie garden, hit subscribe so you get notified when I show you through it in my next video. Thanks for watching. Hydroponics.